Hey everyone, so uh, pretty big news here. Since the last time we talked, I've played Diablo 4. A lot of Diablo 4. All, all, all of Diablo 4, actually. Uh, over this past week and a half, I've been playing through a full review build of the game. It's the entire thing from start to finish, the campaign, all the end game content, every system and feature that D4 will be launching with. I've gone through it, leveled up, and done just about everything there is to do. But I am under embargo until May the 30th. This is pretty standard practice for reviews and early review copies. There's usually this window of time between when you play the game and when you can actually talk about it. The point of which is to give people the time to write, record, and make their review content. However, when the embargo does lift, you can expect a full review from me here in the channel. As of now, pretty much all I can say is, yes, I have played the game, but I can't actually share that content or give you my thoughts. But you'll be getting those from me and plenty of other people in just a, a few days. Um, and don't tell Blizzard, but here's a, here's a teaser of my review. So now that you know, reviews for Diablo 4 will be dropping on May the 30th. Just a few days later, we of course have the early access release and Blizzard has laid out the exact timings and details for all of this. Early access will be officially beginning on June 1st at 4 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time or June 2nd, depending on what your time zone is, at which point anyone who purchased the Digital Deluxe or Ultimate Edition can start playing. As a reminder, the Digital Deluxe version will run you $89.99 and besides the game includes some bonus cosmetics and access to the premium track of the season pass. Oh joy. Uh, whereas the ultimate edition has all of that plus a bonus emote and access to the accelerated season pass, which comes with a 20 tier pass skip. Both versions once more will come with those four days of early access for which you can pre-download the game, which will be available on every platform one day prior on May the 30th. Speaking of which, if you haven't already, you can now safely delete any prior versions of Diablo 4 that you have installed, be it the open beta or the server Sam client, you do not need those any longer. You will in fact have to download an entirely new, the full version of the game for release. Now, if you buy the standard edition, which goes for $69.99, you'll be able to start playing on the official release date, which they say is June 5th at 4 p.m. Pacific time, or again, June 6th, depending on your time zone. I would like to tell you that this early access window just doesn't matter, right? You don't have to jump in. You don't have to pay for it. Because of the nature of Diablo, like other ARPGs, it's going to be a seasonal game, and many players will be starting fresh from scratch when the first season releases sometime in mid to late July. So you really shouldn't feel the need or feel pressured into buying the more expensive editions just to play like four days early. But at the same time, I am also well aware that companies will sell up more expensive versions that grant early access because it works on a lot of people a lot of the time. And I know you're probably tired hearing about FOMO. I am too. I get it. But it's also true. Like people like being a part of things. I'm the same way. I want to be there. Let's be honest with what this is on the real release date, which is not June 1st when everyone else is playing, when all my friends are playing, when all of you, probably a lot of you are playing and everyone's talking about the game. Now, I also, of course, have the added pressure of this being like part of my job. But even before YouTube, I've always wanted to play when all my friends and everyone else was playing. That's just how it is. So I get it. But if that's not important to you, uh, you got other stuff going on, whatever. Great. Save yourself the extra money. Also, let's be honest. There's a very, very likely chance the servers will be a bit of a mess those first few days. Like, yeah, things seemed okay during the server slam, but I think it's reasonable to conclude that the server slam had far fewer players. At least it seems that way. Blizzard wasn't touting their numbers like they did in the open beta with the massive numbers, millions of people who collected like the backpack and all that stuff. They didn't do that for the slam. And it's probably because the slam for many many, many reasons was not nearly as popular. I think there's a really good chance launch is going to be, it's going to be a mess for at least some time. But when the servers are working, it should be a good time. I had a lot of fun during the betas. I would also tell you what I thought about the review, but I can't yet remember embargo. Uh, so yes, when, when the game's running and it's working and we're playing the game, great. And if you're planning on playing Diablo 4 and you want to get the most out of the experience, why not check out today's sponsor? LG's latest, the Ultra Gear OLED Gaming Monitor or 45GR95QE. This monitor is a whopping 45 inches with a wide 21 by nine aspect ratio and a curved screen. It is absolutely massive, let me tell you. I played through the entire D4 campaign and much of the end game using this monitor exclusively. It was pretty awesome. I mean, you really just, you can see everything with a monitor that's this large and it's crystal clear thanks to some of its many features, which include being the world's first 240 hertz OLED 
OLED gaming monitor with a 0.03 MSG TG response time. The OLED display with self flip pixels makes for great color quality. And lastly, as mentioned, it's got a 21 by 9 aspect ratio and literally lets you see more of the game than if you're playing on a standard 16 by 9 monitor. So if you'd like to learn more and check out the LG Ultra Gear OLED gaming monitor yourself and use it for playing Diablo 4, go ahead and check out my link in the video description below. Okay, now let's get back to the Diablo 4 news. Recently, D4's associate game director and art director sat down to answer some burning community questions. Uh, hold up, quick, what, just a quick interjection here. I don't do this often, but a little after the fact edit add in. So after I record this video, uh, about the, uh, the Blizzard questions that I'm about to go over. It started to pop up online that it seems like these were faked. Basically, people look, looked up the usernames of the people that these community questions supposedly came from, and they didn't find them. Now, the host of this interview with the FGS, the Future Game Show YouTube channel, they had posted online asking people for community questions, and they got a grand whopping total of zero responses. So I don't think this is so much like faked, orchestrated by Blizzard. I think it's much more probable that these guys had an interview lined up with Blizzard, they were looking for community questions, and no one gave a crap, and nobody responded, and so they just came up with stuff, or they pulled questions from elsewhere and changed the username. There's a different, definitely a bunch of different possible scenarios, but I think, frankly, First of all, they just screwed up by framing this as community questions if it wasn't actually community questions, if they just generated it or pulled questions not from their community, whatever. Just don't even frame it as community anything. Just say, here, D Blizzard answers some big questions or whatever, you know? So they definitely screwed up there. But frankly, the second and the more important point is uh, the source of the questions isn't as matter as the information that's being discussed with the questions and then Blizzard's answers to them and then what that means for the game. That's what I care about. I don't care who asked the questions. I just think... FGS, and then if Blizzard knowingly knew that these weren't real community questions and they answered them, but again, I think that's much more, much less likely than these people had an interview with Blizzard, asked for community for, community for questions, nobody cared, and then they were in panic mode, so they just made stuff up. Why they didn't change the framing, I don't know. You'd have to ask whoever helped put this video together, but just wanted to add that amendment. Where the questions came from don't matter to me as much as the content of the questions and what Blizzard's response is. There we go. And we got some interesting information out of this. So the first question was, will Diablo 4 give incentive to play old normal mode characters once seasons come along? To which they said, we really are putting all of our emphasis or a lot of our emphasis, I should say, on trying to make sure that we've created the most exciting seasonal content that we can. So a lot of our new gameplay systems, the new seasonal quest line that we'll be adding in every season, all tie into this like really big seasonal theme that we'll have. We're really trying to make sure that it feels fun to go make a new character and roll through and play play again. So uh, more or less here, it seems like the answer to the question is no, there won't be much incentive to go play the old normal mode characters, or as it's known in the game, like the eternal realms, once a season begins. Clearly they are focused on the seasons. They want you playing the seasons. This is where all of the new stuff and the good stuff is going to be. Now he added that a big part of the reason for this is that there's an obvious endpoint to progression in Diablo 4, saying Diablo is specifically designed around the idea of capped progression. There's only so much power that you can get. It's not a never ending curve where you're constantly finding an even better item and an even better item. Items get to a certain level of power and then they stop. And it really comes down to, do you have the right combination of items? Have you made all the best choices in the skill tree? Is that the best build or the most fun build? That's really more of the focus that we have. So yes, if you weren't aware already, Diablo 4 is not the type of game where you're making a single character and progressing on that character continuously playing for months or years on end there is basically an end point to all of it once you get to the position where the highest item level gear starts dropping it's then about just acquiring all of the aspects that you need for that gear that you want for your build and then looking for the best roles possible and sooner or later you're pretty much going to be done like Diablo 4 like many other ARPGs is a game about starting over and trying new things uh, with the seasons, give you the opportunity to jump in and play a new class or try new builds for your favorite class, check out the new gear that gets added, and then along with that, of course, any of the new features they say will be coming with each season. But if you just wanna play like one character and not engage with the seasons, after a while with D4, yes, there, 
you're just basically going to run out of stuff to do. There is not never-ending content. There is not a never-ending gear treadmill. Eventually, your gear will be at the point where you can do all of the hardest things in Diablo 4. There's really no more challenge that you're presented with until the new seasons come out or you want to try a new character or a new build or whatever. All right, next question. Will skill trees be further expanded with new branches or choices for existing abilities in future patches and seasons? The answer was, this is really something we're thinking about more as part of our expansion releases. We're not talking about expansions too much today. We'll talk more about those in the future, but for like big additions to the skill tree, that's really where they want to be. Now we will be doing like meta changes and tuning on a regular basis from season to season as we go and adding more legendary items, more unique items for players to collect. Uh, we'll be adding those things, but things like changes to the skill tree will be for expansions. This once again sort of raises the question as to what exactly we should be expecting from each season or rather how substantial are the things that we're going to be getting in each season because as we've known all along and as was just reiterated they are planning to develop and sell us expansions and I'd, I'd say it's safe to assume that most of the bigger content updates uh, will be reserved for those expansions things like a skill tree update but also getting new zones getting new acts going to new continents in the world of sanctuary and of course the new playable classes that stuff is going in the expansions. So the hope with the seasons is that they can still add meaningful content and changes. Remember, that's why we have all these new microtransactions besides them making money. This is the reason for us, the players, why we have all these new microtransactions. And they have said that these will open up new ways to play beyond just adding new gear. What that all ends up actually meaning, we'll see. And sometime soon, because as mentioned in our last coverage of Diablo 4, we got confirmation that Blizzard will be doing another developer live stream where they will primarily be focused on showcasing and discussing season number one. This should be happening sometime shortly after launch. I'm looking forward to seeing what they have to show and what they have to say. Another question here, are the Diablo 4 devs considering the idea of adding a loot filter like Path of Exile or Last Epoch? The answer to which was basically they're considering a lot of things and these are the sort of things that might be coming in seasonal updates. Something like a loot filter, which if you don't know, it's basically like, hey, I don't want to see any more of the white or blue items dropping. I don't need them. They're junk, whatever. I mean, yes, you can still salvage them or you could sell them, but if you didn't want to see any white and blue items ever again technically uh, this is what like a loot filter would be for and that's the sort of quality of life uh, minor improvement that they are considering for seasons and then finally i just wanted to quickly mention this one question where they were asked what they learned from the beta test weekends and the response was so i think a lot of people who had the chance to play the beta weekends probably or certainly hopefully understand that these were not marketing events these were actually to test the game and to stress the game in particular we know a lot of uh, testing internally is done but it's it, there's basically no replacement for uh, wide scale testing and that's certainly the case for uh, it's certainly the case for like testing server infrastructure and seeing how you can do with lots and lots of people connecting to your servers although i would definitely argue they're definitely partially marketing like especially things like the open beta th there was a lot of marketing promoting those things and yes part of that is to get a lot of people in it but part of it is to get people hyped up to give people a taste so i agree it's not just marketing but it definitely is also in addition to the testing, it is marketing. Because if they really just wanted to test stuff, uh, they would have like an open beta for months, right? The people could really thoroughly test all the systems. But I guess there's a difference between systems testing and bug fixing and finding and like server performance testing, right? Uh, next question here, not from this Q&A, but just in general, let me uh, ask you a question. What do you think the odds are that the Druid is actually going to be OP? Well, Turns out it might actually be pretty high. You know, I know during Diablo 4's beta testing, the Druid was like the butt end of pretty much every single joke related to class balance. There were a lot of memes out there, and it seemed like the perception was that it was just a really undertuned class, at least for, the, for those first 25 to 20 levels. But it turns out at release, they might actually just be super OP. When asked in a recent GameStar interview, Joe Pipora said that the Druid is actually one of our strongest classes, at least according to our internal test. However, players were not able to experience the Druid's full potential during the beta. Is. Obviously, the biggest thing that we weren't able to experience was the Druid class mechanic. They've got their own class mechanic, like every class has their own class mechanic. We just didn't see that in the Druid. In addition to being level capped and not having the full access to the tree, and of course, things like the Paragon boards, and actually being able to build out a good set of gear to coincide with the build, that's all stuff we just didn't experience at all. Now, we did hear rumors coming through leaks from the endgame testing that took place last fall. Many people who participated in those tests were saying that both the Warrior and Druid to get very strong at end game once they have all of their skill points, their class mechanics, the paragon board is filled out and they are fully geared. And most certainly for
further cementing the likelihood that Druid might be good is fellow YouTuber Wadijo, who recently posted a Diablo 4 launch tier list where he ranked the Druid very high in just about everything, in end game potential, in build diversity, in group utility, and for hardcore. Basically, the only thing that it wasn't A or S tier in were early game progression and mobility. I can live with that. Um, I, frankly, I'm tickled to hear this news that uh, apparently the Druid is going to be strong because I love the Druid class fantasy. Druids in a lot of games, Wardens and ESO, that kind of nature attuned to animal thing. Like it's super cool. I really like it. So if the class isn't trash tier, that's even all the better for me. I would probably still check it out and make a character even if it was trash tier. Okay, now let's talk about some Diablo themed um, marketing stuff that's happening right now. So there's Twitch drops beginning on June 5th and lasting for about four weeks. Diablo 4 Twitch drops will be available. So basically each week there will be a new set of cosmetic items up for grabs, which will include weapon and back pieces for every single class in the game. In order to get these, you have to watch from three to six hours of any eligible Diablo 4 streams on Twitch. Week one's rewards will include drops for the Rogue and Necromancer, week two, the Sorcerer, week three, the Druid, and week four for Barbarian. Simultaneously, they are also running what they're calling the Support a Streamer program, in which gifting two Twitch subscriptions to eligible streamers will earn you the Primal Instinct. This is this white and black mount with like these runic markings on it. If you want to do it, go ahead, but I'll tell you, you're far away from from your mouth. A lot of these cosmetic stuff, a character cosmetics is like one thing because being able to see like your shoulder pads and your helms and your weapons, it's cool when you get cosmetics that look good. But for the mount, like it's underneath your character for one and whatever. If you want to do this or if you want to support streamers, I'm all for supporting fellow content creators. Do that, do your thing. Uh, and, and if you're wondering, no, I'm, I'm not going to be a part of this. I don't really stream on Twitch. I prefer making YouTube videos Wh while I'm gaming. I kind of want to just be like shades drawn, lights off, no talking. I no talking, just focus on the game. That's what I like. And that's actually, if, if you're curious, if you used to watch my Twitch streams, that's pretty much why I don't stream anymore. I like gaming a lot more when I don't have to like put on a show. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's go on. Some more stuff here. Blizzard released a Diablo 4 live action trailer, and you know, it seemed to have a lot of downvotes. It was like a third or something or a fourth, but I don't know. I thought this was actually pretty cool. Fairly well done, in my opinion, for a live action video game trailer. How good can these really actually be? And you know, this is clearly aimed at like the mass market appeal. This is one of those things that you'd see like in a Super Bowl commercial. If we were around the Super Bowl, I feel like this is the kind of thing that would be there. For what it is, I thought it was decent, right? It's fine. Diablo 4 cross KFC promotion motions going on. Uh, supposedly this will be starting on May 29th where, I don't know, buying stuff at KFC, something related to KFC purchases will get you some in-game cosmetics uh, for D4. So the skins, what they were going to be got leaked and recently we actually saw uh, like a character model holding the thrumming axle as it's called. Stuff looks fine, whatever. If you're going to buy KFC anyways, get your skins. Great. Uh, and then there's some Diablo themed gaming gear and not surprising this happens with a lot of Blizzard games, but uh, Secret Lab has a pair of Diablo 4 themed chairs. And then also Steel Series is selling a mouse headset and mouse pad if you're interested in any of that. And that's going to do it for this week's news covering D4. Uh, I just want to say as we're wrapping up here, it's certainly not the case with every new game that's coming out that I find myself like eagerly anticipating. I would say it happens at best a couple of times a year where we got a game coming out that sort of rekindles that kid on Christmas feeling. Diablo 4 is one of those games. I say that with confidence. Like I cannot wait for the launch next week. I have every intention of playing a lot of this game when it releases. You'll see some more coverage of me. It's not going to be every video, but I'm going to talk about game, the game, and I'll got my review coming out. I'll talk about the game periodically as things pop up in the community discussion points. I'll probably talk about that too. And that'll be mixed in with our usual variety covering things like Throne and Liberty. What a mess that was. I just can't believe it, but whatever. D4 is coming out and I'm very, very excited. Uh, is everyone going to love it? No. Will it have issues? Of course it will. Uh, am I going to be playing Diablo 4 for the rest of my life? <laughs> very doubtful but at the very least I'm pretty certain it's going to be fun at least for a while and I am happy with that I'm, I'm looking forward to it so thank you for watching hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one take it easy